Hi, Rob here. I wanted to do a video about the circumcision of the heart. I heard a sister just doing a video about mentioning about circumcision and the word and how God uh, brings this brings this word to us. She she explained it totally different than what I just said, but it just made me realize what the circumcision of the of the heart is. As opposed to the old circumcision in the Old Testament, we got the New Testament now. It's the circumcision of the heart. Okay, that's what we're dealing with. We got to go to the words, what they mean in the old, uh, New Testament that Paul was writing, Peter was writing about. And that was the heart is the thoughts and emotion. So, circumcision of the thoughts and emotions, okay, then. If the uh, Old Testament was when they removed the foreskin or the um, the useless flesh from you know the man off of uh, you know what, how they do the circumcision physically, okay. Well, it's like in the heart, thoughts and emotions. It's removing the <coughs> use the useless thoughts and emotions from your thoughts and emotions. You know what I mean? Like the so. Also, when the Holy Spirit comes and removes those u useless thoughts and emotions, okay, or the useless parts of our thoughts and emotions, you know, the ones that can't be used for good, to generate the, to, okay, the, the seed comes forth, okay, so I'm trying to relate it to Old Testament. The seed is the Word of God, the logic of God, okay, the expressed logic correct reasoning of God. So if you have the correct reasoning coming forth through your thoughts and emotions, okay, he'll send his word through our thoughts and emotions, you see. So he's going to cut off the bad thoughts and bad emotions from us, and he'll send his word or his logical reasoning through us, you see circumcision of the heart slash thoughts and emotions so I just want to share that I thought that was kind of cool I just realized how that works with the scripture and then you look at what Jesus said that the seed going forth is the word of God right and the Old Testament circumcision had to do with the physical man's physical um part that a woman doesn't have, okay, and the seed that goes forth and generates and reproduces human beings, okay, and in our case, in the spirit, we want to, yes, send forth the word, the seed is the word of God, okay, to generate forth mankind to be born again, to let them, so, the logic that we share of Christ Jesus through our thoughts from and through from him through our thoughts and emotions, okay cause others to be born again, that's what our circumcision of our thoughts and emotions generate of course they don't generate it. the word that comes through our thoughts and emotions generates born, people to be born again that interesting so if you hadn't considered that before and I hadn't um, enjoy that truth in Christ Jesus I think it's cool um, yeah I don't know what else I could say about that if you got some comments post or do a video on anything else you can think of that relates to that um, that's pretty cool so that's how we're, because remember like the Old Testament, I can say this, I guess. The Old Testament was to generate the nation of God so that Jesus could be physically birthed forth from Mary to be our Savior in the flesh, to come in the flesh, God in the flesh, right? Now that Jesus came, he's bringing us flesh into the 
spiritual birth. It's pretty cool. So we come from a physical. So it was all the, the goal of the Old Testament was to generate forth Israel to get the result, and that is Jesus to be born. Okay, to, to fulfill the Old Testament. Now the New Testament is not generating forth human beings, but generating forth his logic to make the human beings that are here be regenerated in the spirit, born again, to walk in the spirit by the logic of God, the word of God that is Jesus Christ, the logic in us causing us to do what Jesus did. Okay, so that's a beautiful truth and it's powerful and he's given that to us and so we should make sure that we're operating in that. And I had another little revelation earlier too when I was, um, I was kind of thirsty but I wasn't drinking my water. I had a bottle of water I'm driving, you know. I hadn't touched my water all day since I left for work and went to work and all that. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you know, I have this water, I'm thirsty. Why haven't I used it, you know? It's like when we are in our walk, Jesus gives us what he's given us, like the things we know and understand, the logic he's given us and our thoughts and emotions to share forth to others and to act on and to do the things we know he wants us to do, right? So if we have these things that we can think on and speak on and do, why don't we, you know, make sure we're, we're using it, you know? It's like, why would he give it to us and we not use it? Like this water was sitting in my bag all day and I'm thirsty. Why haven't I drank some yet? If I had to drink some all day, I wouldn't be thirsty, you know what I mean? So we need to keep using what he gives us. We gotta use it and act on it and teach it and go forth with it. And not just, like if he gives it to us, don't put it away on the side. I like when Jesus said, you got the light, put it up on the table for everyone to see. Put it under a bushel or a bed, you're not going to be able to see it. If he gives it, let's use it, you know? So I guess that's that's the end of the video now. And uh, blessings in Christ Jesus are without end. Take care.